All right, we have a lot of people filtering in and I wanna make sure um, we get as many people as we can before we get started because it'll be hard for me to, to keep hitting that admit button for everybody. So- um, What was your costume? My costume, What? how many of you are familiar with the movie Encanto or Encanto? Lynn, it's a, it's a new Disney movie and um, my daughter who is three was Maribel and I was her sister, Louisa, who was the strong sister. So this is, this is I, don't, I don't know if you guys could see. Oh, I mean, no, I gotta shut my blur off. In a minute. Cute. So that was us last <laughs> week. And my husband was Bruno, who in the movie they say we don't talk about Bruno. So we didn't, we didn't talk about it too much last night. But all right, let's let some more people in. <laughs> yes, I had to wear the strong costume. <laughs> All right. Can I have a volunteer for somebody to be my co-host to let people in as we are going along today? So that way I could focus on our presentation. Kate, thank you so much. You are going to be my co-host. Welcome. All right. So let's get started in, in today's conversation. And again, I understand it's lunchtime. Take your lunch out, eat it as we go along. If you can though, please turn your cameras on. This will be a much better conversation with us if we could see your faces. Um, so, so please do that if you're able to. Protect your mental health and avoid burnout. Why are you here today? Put it in the chat or come off mute. Why did you pick this course with this class to join us today? Is it because you're just feeling it or because you see it in your area, in your office, at your home? What What's the reason for coming today? I'm exhausted. Exhaustion. Yeah. I am with you on that. Yes, exhaustion is definitely one, Tina, for sure. Um, Kate, for, for, right? Since 2020, I'm exhausted. I, absolutely. I, you know, I... Every, I just saw a lot of head nods at the same time and 2020 uh, was, you know, it, it feels like a blur and it feels, it feels like it went by so slow, but then it's, 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 it's that strange period where what is, what, what is it right now? <laughs> We're in 2022 going into 2023 and things have changed quite a bit in our world since then. So, um, so I'm with you, Tina. All right, let's see some other things in here. Kate, would you, would you mind helping me out and reading some of the the chat with me along it's going quick so absolutely um you cannot pour from an empty cup which i love right we have to refill ourselves before we pour into anyone else right right um someone said you are the reason um jan said this um you are the reason it's been a busy year because <laughs> so. we're on zoom a lot <laughs> uh huh. And I burned out at work, which is affecting other areas of life, family, personal, et cetera. Right. So how we feel one place is where we show up, how we show up everywhere else. Can I add something to that? Please do, Melissa. Hi. Yes. Good afternoon. Hi. So I, I just I won't go into everything, but um, in the past year, not only, you know, we've been trying to build a business and keep that going. But in my house, and I know I'm not the only one, we've had some really big health challenges. Um, my old, my daughter had spinal surgery last November for scoliosis. My 16 year old, she's doing fabulously well, okay. but um, she's lupus as well. So it's an ongoing, but she's gonna be okay. But I know anyone else else who has dealt with this. Yes, she's healed, but it's coming back from that. It's the, um, the mental side of things. Like now you can breathe and we're trying to get back into business. And I can see the stress in the kids and not just me. So it's trying to find healthy ways and to realize it's okay to be overwhelmed, but find those strategies, not only for myself and my business, but to show my girls who are 16 and 20 that yes, shit gets hard. Life throws things at you, but we can come back and it's only gonna make us stronger. 
Oh, so so well said. And thank you for sharing that, Melissa. And uh, I do want to make a keynote that this is a safe place on this call today. So we are going to be having real conversations about real stuff. And uh, it's, it's going to be okay. So um, please feel comfortable sharing your stories with us so that way we could um, we could feel a sense of uh, relate relatableness, I guess, to relate with each other on how we're how we're doing and how how do we come up with those solutions like Melissa just said on how we 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 come back. How do we come back from that, right? It's okay that we've all been knocked down for the last two plus years. Now, how do we come back from that going into I think what someone put it in in the chat, the the most it's going to change the changing market that we've seen in a long time. So how do we take all of this and really thrive through um, after going through such a such a mental health and burnout phase of our lives? So so yes. All right. Anything else in the chat, Kate, that we should that we we want to point out? So I keep hearing a lot of people feel like they've been holding their breath since 2020. Yes. Yes. I feel the same way. Uh, absolutely. I agree with you. Um, all right. So now here's another question for you and please put it in the chat. What, what is the one thing you want to take away from this class? We're going to go through a whole presentation. I would love to learn from you. What is the one thing you want to take away from today? Go ahead, Kelly, you could unmute, you could unmute, put it in the chat, whatever you'd like. Oh, I think that, um, thank you. Um, I think the one thing that I'd like to take away from today is just, you know, I'm kind of early career, just a couple of years in, but you know, I've had moments during transactions where you're feeling that stress and kind of holding my breath. And I, I guess I'm looking for, you know, to listen to what people have to share, but also just, I guess, kind of get ahead of it. Like, I know that this can be a stressful business. I know part of my job is to maintain, a certain level of calm composure with working with clients so that they're not taking that on. And I think I just want to learn, you know, some ways and strategies to handle it because I know it's going to be coming. It's going to be inevitable and how to set healthy boundaries too in the business. So I just want to make sure I heard you right. So strategies for handling clients. Um, or just handling business in general, um, you know, and just learning how to, you know, I guess be more composed and not, I, I feel like, looking back on some transactions I've had, I just feel like I sometimes keep myself up in the middle of the night thinking about so many different things. And I know that that can be part of the business, but I just want to just hear what other people have to share who are more experienced than me and how they've maybe handled things like that so that I can do a better job for myself and, you know, certainly in the business moving forward. Thank All you. Right. Thank you, Kelly. All right. Allah, you have your hand up. Oh, yes. So basically, I mean, COVID wasn't very stressful for me during the last two years. Uh, I mean, unfortunately for some people, yes, with health issue and family and et cetera. And I did very well in the last two years. But now to be honest, this market, it scared me more. And because I did very well and I like to keep my level the same. So I feel much more stressed now because of the market and the way it's changing. So, I mean, I was like half mask free and something. I did not care too much about it, but definitely. And they got COVID and they got it very bad. <laughs> but definitely, uh, I, I mean, th this job, I think our job is very stressful and burning. Yeah, agreed. Yes, thank you. Yep, I have that on the list to talk about how can we get through this market that is changing on the other side. So thank you for adding that. Let's see what else we have. How to unplug and set boundaries with work and personal, learn skills to reset and take better care of myself going forward, all while not drastically affecting my business by not grinding it out over and over. It's a good one. Learn how to manage my time better and know how I am not the only one in this boat ride. You are not the only one in the boat ride right? How many of us can agree with that? You are not the only one. Okay. And then learn how to set boundaries for business and personal time. Oh my goodness. We're going to talk about that. So um, I'm just going to, again, introduce myself. Um, as you guys know, my name is Jen Bovey. Uh, you know me a lot from uh, being the area director for the region and coming on our growth calls and the um, 
the one thing uh, sessions we have in Ignite and such. Uh, I am also an operating principal here in Rhode Island for Keller Williams Coastal. And above all, I am a mom of a three-year-old So and, and a wife. So I, you know, when we are talking about balancing work, life, and how to figure that out, I'm I am right in that boat with you guys of how do you figure it out where where you feel satisfied. And you know what? There are days where I just don't. I feel like I just just did not mom well that day, or I just did not OP well that day, business wise. And um, you know, working through those things and having these resources um, after going through this presentation, uh, I was really excited to come in and, and go over it with you guys today because there are so many great little tips and ideas for us to really bounce back. And it's okay for us to have those days and give ourselves the grace of, you know what, I didn't mom well today and I'm just gonna be okay with that. Tomorrow I'm gonna be 1% better. And I'm going, and, and I'm, that's what I'm going to focus on. So we're going to go through little strategies like that today. And Kate, it's so true, right? Uh, grace is, is one of those words. I think it's Mark King, our president of Keller Williams. Uh, that's his word of the year is grace. And it's such an important word for us as we go through this particular topic, which is protecting your mental health and avoid burnout. Uh, one of, and I'm going to share some things with you personally about, you know, my life and things that I'm doing to help myself along the way. And, and I'm going to give you guys permission to share your stories as well, because that is going to help somebody on this screen. Somebody on the screen is going to be able to feel relatable to your story and it's going to help. So please do that today as we move along. Um, one of the things I wanted to show you that I, that I, for the last year have been working on is creating groups of women coming together. And this is for me, you know, this is something I wanted to do because I felt a passion behind it because of work-life balance and all of that. Created a group of women that just come together and meet and we talk about life. We talk about the every aspect of it from the trauma aspect of it to the healing aspect, to solutions, to how do we keep ourselves where we are uh, encouraging each other because sometimes social media can what it could lie to us it could show us how perception is but not reality is um and so we i created this group and um, I'm, I'm just here in rhode island and it's called shine time and it's to get her together um, and that was one strategy that i used for my mental health to be honest with you I did it for my mental health because I needed the group. And now having it, it's, it's, it's formed a sense of a tribe or a community that I could have a like conversation with a bunch of women that are, that are feeling the same thing. So um, that was one thing that I have been doing to help myself um, and, and stay out of the burnout. Because I'll tell you what, Burnout is real in this job. I don't care if you are uh, an admin on a role, if you are an agent, a rainmaker, a team leader, an operating person. It's for every single aspect of this industry, burnout happens and can happen fast. So, um, so Jennifer, I think that's really great to figure out what you need and go out and get it, make it happen. Yes, thank you. Yes, Lynn, you're absolutely right. Figure, and that's what we're going to discover today. We're going to really go through this course together. I'm going to share the PowerPoint here, and, and we're going to figure out what is one thing that you could do and go out and get. So, Lynn, thank you for sharing that. Anything else before we dive into the PowerPoint? Maybe how to stop, like, I know for me, <clears throat> excuse me, I set myself ridiculous goals. Um, and I'm going to meet them this year. And I worked remotely for four months on a boat. I hired and trained an admin. I started a team and ran a market shift. And I'm going to have my most productive year ever because I just don't ever stop. And my friends tell me that. And my boyfriend calls me relentless. He doesn't mean it in the way that I'm going to take it because I'm going to turn it into a positive. But that's, yeah, there you are. 
Yeah. It's who we are. That's right. You know what? And how many of how many of us on this screen could relate to that? And how many how many people tell us that? Right? You know, you just said that. You know, Tina, you just said that your boyfriend said that. I get the same thing from from others as well. Like, how do you do what you do? Why do you do what you do? You're doing too much. They put their opinions on me. Do you guys get that too? Right? Why do you work so hard? I've gotten that since I was 22 years old when I got into the business. I got my license at 22 years old in 2001. And I, from the day I got my business, I just wanted to figure it out. So I was working, working, working. I did as many open houses as I could. I did whatever I could. And when I was about 25, somebody would say, <laughs> I'm 43, just, you don't have to, you don't have to do the math. I'm 43. Uh, so they would ask me, why are you working so hard? Why are you doing that? And my answer was always, I want to do this because I want to be able to not do this when I'm in my 40s. Well, here we are, <laughs> right? I, yet there is a plan there. And whether I knew it or not, I knew that if I worked hard and went and got what I wanted to get at that time, it would lead me to where I wanted to go. That makes sense, guys? Don't let others slow you down for what you want to hit for your goals. What we're going to talk about today is the, how you're going to do that and how you do that in a manner where it does not burn you out because we allow burnout. We, we won't allow somebody else to burn out. We will take care of somebody else in the first second, right? If somebody says, I need help, I need help today because I did this, what would you say? Go home, go relax. I'll take you food. I'll take care. You take care of everybody else, but who? I can't do it right, like Blake on the on the voice, but <laughs> right, us. So let's let's have that conversation. Thank you, uh, thank you, Tina, for adding that. All right, let me share my screen. I'm not good at this, so here we go. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna work on it. Bear with me. I'm gonna go to presentation. All right, can you guys see? Can you see the presentation? Give me a thumbs up, Tina. I see you. Can you give me a thumbs up? Yes. Okay, great. So today, as I've said multiple times, protect your mental health and avoid burnout. Please, uh, you know, I can't see the chat in this view, so I'm going to rely on Kate, my co-host, to help me with that. And raise your hand or just come off mute. Let's just have a real conversation today. I don't want it to be all about me talking today. All right. What we're, we're, we're going to review. Go ahead, Kate. Was there something? Or was that... Tina. Okay. I was just saying, I got you. <laughs> All right. Thank you. In the course today, we're going to discover characteristics of mental health, health and burnout. Uh, we're going to identify potential causes related to burnout. Some of us are like, I know the cause. <laughs> we're going to go through a couple of those. We're going to learn strategies to protect your mental health and then identify, identify resources related to mental, mental health and preventing burnout. Any questions before we go on? And I do. I did make a little list of a couple of other things that were mentioned just a little while ago, and we could touch on those as we go on with these scenarios. Can I have a volunteer read this quote from Sean Aker? Go ahead. I see your hand up. I can't see. Go ahead, Kelly. Sure. Happy to help. Thank you. Um, when we are happy, when our mindset and mood are positive, we are smarter, more motivated, and thus more successful. Happiness is the center and success revolves around it. All right, Kelly, you did a really great job. I'm going to ask you to read it one more time because it's so powerful. Absolutely. When we are happy, when our mindset and mood are positive, we are smarter, more motivated, and thus more successful. Happiness is the center and success revolves around it. What did you what did what did you get from this? Anybody on the screen? What did you get from from this quote? What did you hear? What did you feel? Unmute yourself or put it in the chat. When we are happy, when our mindset and mood are positive, we are smarter, smart, smarter, and more motivated and thus more successful. What did you hear with us? Did it it begins with, with us. It begins with each one of us that we have more control than we think we do. Love that. Yes. 
I don't know who it was because my screen only shows me a few people and it didn't show me who was speaking, but thank you. And I see a couple, don't worry, be happy. Don't worry, be happy. How many of us were, at, was it family reunion when Sean Aker was there? Right? Yes, Tina was there. I could see, and, and maybe Kelly, I think. Uh, Sean Aker, this is a great book. So if you're looking for a happiness book or a way to find more strategies, take a screenshot of this or write his name down. It's The Happiness Advantage. It is a great book to add to your list. Kate, any other comments in the chat that, that we could mention? Yes, yeah, so um, happiness creates success, not the other way around. Yes. And then just some comments about people loving the book. And um, I find myself more dialed in, more effective when the, that state of mind. Agreed, agreed. The mindset. Thank you. All right. You're Thank healthier you. too healthier. We're going to talk about that for sure. Hi, Carol Manelli. Sorry, I see you on my screen all of a sudden, so I had to say hi. All right. Hi. <laughs> so we're going to discover characteristics of mental health burnout. This is, this is a little definition of mental health. Emotional well-being, psychological well-being, and social well-being. I just, I'm taking a pause or going slow on this because this graphic really hit me when I started looking at it on how, how can it affect us and how? So the, the way we think, the way we feel, the way we act, that's a big one. Like that one to me is so big is how we act and then how we make choices and how we relate to others. I'm going to throw in the chat uh, as we go through later on in this in this course, uh, the resources that they gave us for this, but I have to stop sharing to do that. So I'll do that later on. But thinking, feeling, acting, making choices and relating to others, just think about that for a minute. As we went through the last couple of years, did we think a little differently? Yeah, sure. How about how we felt? That was that was a little strange at times, right? Especially it was around that time where it was like, are, are, are we wearing masks? Are we not wearing masks? You know, how does that work? Everything was so kind of in this weird, I don't know, space and how we felt. Acting, how, when the last couple of years, let me ask this group, do you feel that, people came together more or got separated more. And I'm gonna give the example of 9-11. When 9-11 happened, how did people react? Do you guys remember? What happened with our nation? Came together. Everybody came together. It was like a sense of like, oh my goodness, this is amazing. Does anybody remember how they felt? Patriotic. Absolutely. It was a time of devastation, yet everybody felt like so patriotic and just together, together. Now, now let's look at COVID and what happened during the, the pandemic. How did people start reacting or acting? We have a lot of comments in here from both to people seem angrier to first coming out together and then divided. Yes. Fear right of each other. Say, Separate. Yeah. I hear fear Families a lot. came together more, realized what's more important to them, but it caused a lot of social stress and anxiety amongst people not related mm. yeah. and divided and panic. Yeah. And do you think that that could affect our mental health a lot? Not even just in the real estate industry, right? making choices if you're going through transactions and your clients are making choices during that time how many people were just making choices because they needed to make something fast because they needed to move out of the city because of whatever their situation was choices were being made that were different than if they were in a different environment mm -hmm. right that's why it changed so dramatically and then relating to others that 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 got a little weird which, you know what, what, what ended up happening, we talk a lot about this with our team leaders and our leadership, 
because we want to know like why aren't agents coming back into the office why why aren't we re-engaging with each other and coming together well what happened was it was honestly it was more than 66 days of us not being apart so we created a new habit what was the new habit not coming together yeah. right staying staying apart and now we have to recreate the habit to come back together again and work harder as a group. Would you guys agree? Sure. It's harder to now to now come together and relate with others. We just had a grand opening at my office here in Warwick, Rhode Island, and it was probably one of the most, it, it felt so good because it felt almost, and I don't want to use the word normal, but I would say pre-pandemic. It felt the most pre-pandemic that I felt in a long time where people were just able to have conversation because now it's been a little while and people are getting back into social environments. So they're relearning the skill and relearning the habit to come together. So this course comes at such a great time because I believe we're on the upswing of the curve of coming back together and really being a tribe or being together as a community. Any comments or anything on that before we move on? Anything in the chat, Kate? Uh, someone just posted a new, if people are stressed and burnt out within your office, it makes it less desirable to return, right? So, I mean, from that, when we're burnt out and stressed, um, everyone, everyone replenishes their supply differently. Um, so some people retreat when that happens. Um, I, if you put me in a room with 400 people, I tend to get energy from that, especially if I'm running it. So that's how I replenish, uh, but not, those are two ends of the spectrum, right? So to the typical person is when they're stressed and burned out, they kind of stay, stay, they stay where they are. They don't right. go out and venture. Right. I agree. And you know, that was, that's one of the conversations we're having is we just need to keep doing what we're doing, which is getting back in person and just let it be awkward. Let it, let it, let it continue to be a little bit awkward. The more you do it, the less awkward it's going to be. It's just like when you first got into real estate, how many of you were super confident, knew what you were doing, knew what you were going to say, knew how to fill out a form and sold a house. I hope nobody just put their hand up because I remember, even though it was over 20 years ago, I remember how I felt and it felt awkward and it felt like I didn't know what to say, what to do. That's where we are right now is we're coming on the other side of that. Let's get our confidence back and build it back up again. So, Kim, so, so oh, oh, sorry, Miranda. I just wanted to, I mean, excuse me, Jennifer, I just wanted to add something. Please do. I love it. Yeah. So some of us, and I know I'm not the only one started right before COVID hit, right, you know, that, that fall before. And so, I mean, I know personally, I was in the business for a couple of months, you know, probably six months. And then when COVID hit and shut everything down, the, you know, the insanity ensued. And this is the only market we've ever known. So this is completely, totally brand new for us in this, this change of events. We're just learning how to figure it out and adapt to it. So that's a whole nother piece to the puzzle. Yes, absolutely. It really is. So let's figure it out. So here's the next slide. And now we're talking about why, why is it important? Why is mental health really important to us? And it's important because mental health is essential to your life and overall happiness. Would you agree? essential to your life and overall happiness. Mental health impacts several different facets of your life from physical to relationships to self-esteem. How do you think caring for your mental health is important? How do you on this call, how do you think caring for your mental health, health is important? Look at these three avenues, physical, yeah. relationship. Well, if you don't have any of it, then you're, you know, you may as well stay in bed. And it helps you build momentum. Each yeah. little piece is your foundation. Like say yeah. exercising in the morning, 
And then you have that little bit of fuel and pep in your step to say, I checked the box. I did something. I have a victory for today. What's the next one? And either, everything from your energy level to your conversations and relationships are affected by that. So it's they all work in harmony. Kevin and Carol, you're both right, right? So it, it's 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 three steps. If your physical health is off, what ends up happening to the other two? They're a little off, right? If if your self esteem is off, what happens to the rest? It's so you're absolutely spot on. They are they coincide with each other to where if we focus on each one of those, they'll all work together. So thank you for sharing that. Kate, did you just put your hand up? I did. Yes. Yeah. So. Um... You know, in COVID, well, my my core values are family, friends, community connections, financial stability. Um, you know, COVID wrecked havoc with that, especially in the beginning. So all of these areas were impacted for me. Um, and I thought I could storm through it without support until each one of those areas started to really disintegrate. <laughs> right. So finding what is helpful for you and and to improve your mental health is so important. And doing it with help is important too, right? Whether it's accountability partner, your coach, your partner, your family, friends, having someone there, right? And at, at home, we say move a muscle, change a thought, um, which, which definitely helps. Why do you say that at home, move a muscle, change a thought? Um, because when we sit there and stew or d dwell in what we're doing, we're not focusing on solutions. We're just focusing on what the problem is. So when we get out and move, whether we just take a walk ourselves or go do yoga, or we have three dogs, we're nuts, so we walk the dogs, right? Or when we're out, we talk to the neighbors. It changes our inner energy. It changes how we are feeling so that we're better able to come up with a more positive solution versus stay stuck in the problem. Love that. Thank you, Kate. You're welcome. All right. So the number two portion of this, and I'm not following along, give me a second here, is the burnout section. And the definition is the mental or physical collapse caused by overwork or stress. <clears throat> I'm going to read that again. The mental or physical collapse caused by overwork or stress. If you felt overworked, whether at your own doing or not, or stressed, put it in the chat section. I'd love to see if it's if it's a big group of us. I mean, I, I, I will say, yes, that's me. I feel overworked by my own doing, by the way. And that causes stress. <laughs> that causes lack of sleep, right? Being a lot. I don't know about anybody else, but I burn out a lot from thinking about all the things that I have to do. So it kind of gets stuck like in my head and then I kind of overwhelm myself. So that's where my burnout kind of starts. Yeah. So Jen, someone in here um, posted, so Tiffany said, I get so overwhelmed with everything in the life that I get to a point where I almost freeze and can't function. So that is, um, that's a natural reaction. So, you know, the flight is one, we run away from everything, flight, fright, or freeze, right? Those are the three things that happen to us internally when we get overwhelmed. And and you recognizing it is really important, right? So then finding the things that work for you to help you change that, right? So that freeze doesn't happen as long. And it, and it doesn't mean that we don't move away completely from overwhelm or stress. It just knows it's important that we recognize it and when we recognize it, that we quickly find something to help us break it and stop that pattern. Kate, spot on. Thank you for sharing that, right? Um, I don't know who put that in the chat because I can't really see it that well as we're going through yet. Uh, you know what? I, it, I feel the same way 
a, a lot where, you know, you have so many things you have to find a solution for that you just freeze and don't even, it's like the large pile of laundry that you're trying to figure out how to, where do I even start? How do I even start? And you just freeze and you don't do it. Right. So, but as Kate said, I, I, you know, understanding where you are with, with that and then coming up with solutions and asking for support, asking for help. It was me that posted that. Um, and yeah, so I, I still have another job. I've only been in real estate for a year. I have a young daughter. My husband's unfortunately not too supportive. So it's just, I get to a point where I feel like everyone's picking at me from all sides and I just like don't even know my name sometimes. So this morning I was actually having a hard time. And so it was so good to see this pop up today because... Well, thank you for being here. And, and, and I could relate on so many levels with that, Tiffany. And you know what, it's, it's really just, again, for me, it's how do I, how do I give myself enough grace for the day to say, I'm okay with how, how today went and I'm, I'm tomorrow, I'm going to focus on being 1% better. And that's just for me. That's just me. Um, and, and support, I, you know, if, if you can't get it from one way, see if there's another way that, that we could get more support. Um, for, for me in my life, I work on leverage on a daily basis. If I could afford leverage, I'm going to use leverage. Um, and that's, and that's how I, I work through my burnouts. Um, and some days they don't work by the way. <laughs> some days I, I don't sleep at night because I'm, I have too much on my, my mind that, uh, you know, people say, take out a piece of paper and write it down. <laughs> that doesn't work for me. It's okay. It just doesn't. And some days I just have to wake up the next day and say, okay, I'm not going to let this happen again today to me, because if I let that happen, I'm going to spiral into just somebody who doesn't sleep and is going to be grumpy forever. So how can I, what solution can I put in my world today? So that way I could figure out how to be 1% better. All right. So on here, it says, when was, a, when was there a time that you experienced the feeling of burnout? When was it? And what did you do to change the situation? So I'd love to, if one person on here has an experience that they could share when they felt burnt out, Tiffany, thank you for sharing yours. Do we have one other? Go ahead. I'm happy to share. Okay. I have two. So I'd love to hear from both. So Jan, you could go first, then we'll go to Hala. I, I ran a business for 30 years uh, as a chef and I multiple businesses at the same time. In 1996 on Mother's Day, I remember that I had a burnout. Uh, I couldn't do anything. I didn't even want to go see my mother. The only other time that happened was last weekend. I had so many transactions this year that all of a sudden I just couldn't handle anything. Couldn't focus, couldn't think, couldn't write. Everything was difficult. Um, and the only way I found out of it was the Calm app, listening to it as many times as I possibly can. And it has, um, it's, it's almost like I snapped out of it. I do write lists. They do help me. And I try to just do one thing and celebrate that throughout the day, which turns into 20 things. And the thing that I discovered the most um, this year out of any other time in my life is I absolutely have to do better with systems and um, leverage. Oh, and yeah. that's my plan um, coming up when I'm going to take a couple of days off right now. And that's going to be my focus on how to get those systems. I don't know if that helps anybody, but Jan, it does, you know, it even helps me to hear, to hear that because I could, I, I coach with a lot of our, of our agents here in Rhode Island and a lot of them feel the same way. And what you just said was realizing that you need systems and leverage in your world that would potentially avoid where you are right now going forward. That's what a lot of us need to hear. A lot of us need to hear that it's okay to know that I need to add a system and or leverage into that. So, so thank you so much. Go ahead, Hala. Yeah, I got burned when uh, I have a like life changing in my life and like an event that make me like to be the one only producer in my house. And I was with this, just to start with Kadar William and the training and I was doing bold and they had coach and they have was doing my broker license, which is I never did after. And all those things, I put too much pressure on myself. 
which is way to put me so down for one month, basically. And Kate, she knew about it. I shared it last uh, couple of weeks ago with her. And definitely I give, like remove the coaching even. I mean, if I even now I'm doing good and they think bold is too, still for me, it's like too much pressure on me. So I try to eliminate everything pressure on me and I leverage, start to leverage. I have like a assisting now because it, like I got to the point I'm not happy with the paper or doing any paperwork and stay until 12 a.m. And while my husband have a, his glass of whiskey like at eight, go to bed early and they start to wake up late and I start the leverage help me. I have lady who clean my house, not every week, once every four weeks. My husband do the grocery. I don't go unless I something I really want to buy and something from like very close uh, market to my house, you know? So I start to do everything and I start to do everything make me happy, to be honest. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that's a, such a key point right there, right? Uh, you know, that was something I changed as well is not going to the grocery store. That one small change for me has freed up so much time, crazy enough. And that was just for me, that helped tremendously. So, so when we're talking about leverage, it's in all different ways. And by the way, it's not that I hired somebody to go do it for me. I used Instacart and I got a membership. So it's not that, it, so I fit it into my budget. I made sure it worked that way. And I don't pay for the extra fees because of the membership, but I use it enough to where it frees me off to go, not have to go to the market and I get what I need done. So thank you for sharing that because all, everything that you added is a, a little bit of leverage or what makes you happy, focusing on what makes you happy to avoid the burnout. So thank you. Thank you for that. Our thank next you. question here is potential, potential causes of burnout. Here's some expectations, wishing for a better future, longing for the past. Oh, I wish it was the way it used to be. Anybody ever fall into that? I wish it was the way it used to be. Constant low level anxiety related to expectation, expectations. Responding from that place of anxiety. Now that I've seen that happen time and time for the last few years, obviously before that too, but it was highlighted in the last few years of responding from a place of anxiety. Lack of standards and boundaries. And we talked a little bit about, a lot of you put that in the chat earlier today of figuring out what are the standards and boundaries that I could set. The lack of them are infringements on your freedom, your time, your movement, your choice, exploration, allowing for standards and boundaries to be broken. How many of us had that happen to us where our standards and boundaries were broken? Tina, you could relate, right? And it was, it, it was, it was us that allowed that. By the way, Megan, are you saying that you're related or did you want to add something onto that? No, just that I related very much to that. Yes. So we're let's let's keep going here and go to the next slide if I can. Oh, I just did. In a minute, guys. All right, here we go. Let's learn some strategies to protect, to protect your mental. Oh, I'm gonna lower your hand. Give me one second here. Lower. Okay. So the next section we'll cover and and learn the objective, learning strategies to protect your mental health. What what are all, any ahas or questions before we move on? Any ahas or questions before we move on? And please unmute yourself or put in the chat. May I say something, Jen? Oh, please do. And I don't, you know, I'd imagine, I would like to imagine, I guess I should put it that way, that every market center is the same. I know in mine, I can go, I can see who is here from my market center. And there's quite a few of us. Um, good for us that we're all crazy successful. Um, and yeah, I know I can go to each one of these people and they come to me and we are able to rely on each other. And that is hugely impactful in my life. We need that, Tina. We need that. That's, you know, and that's one of the reasons why I did what I did with, with Shine Time, because I needed that too. We all need that sense of community or, or togetherness support. So, thank you. Tina, the other Tina, with your hand up. I, um, 
for me, I had to learn to be more patient because things took so much longer than how they were before. Yes. How he, I feel like it's a lot of a hurry up and wait. It's like we have to respond to something, but then you have to wait to get an answer on it, right? And we've had to adjust to that that way for a, quite some time now. So I, I totally agree with you. Uh, Kate, anything in the chat? Um, yes, so mindfulness is so essential. So if you talk, people talk about mindfulness um, and agreeing with that. And then someone was reading um, Anxiety Rx by Dr. Russell Kennedy right now. And it's eye-opening for anyone with anxiety. And I think, you know, COVID brought on some form of anxiety for all of us. Um, maybe not what we would think of as typical anxiety before COVID, but whether it's mask or no mask, go to the grocery store, or not go to the grocery store. How do I work from home? How do I not work from home? And those weren't decisions that we made to get us through a day, a week, or a month. Those are decisions we've been making for the last two and a half years. <laughs> so it does create anxiety. Absolutely. Right. And, and Melissa said, or pushed existing anxieties to the forefront. Absolutely. Oh, oh yes. So now, now we're going to get into, to when we protect our mental health, the practicing of self-care. Now, self-care is going to look different for each and every person. Here are just some examples of what we could, we could do for some self-care. Get regular exercise. Just 30 minutes of walking every day can boost your mood and improve your health. How many of you agree with that? 30 minutes of walking. Yeah, you don't want to do it, but then when you go out there and do it, you're like, oh my gosh, that felt so good. The hardest part is just getting started. But that small amount of ex exercise does add up. So, so seriously, if you have that 30 minutes, add it to your routine and see how that shifts a little bit of self-care and, and your, your mental health. The other way is eating healthy, regular meals and staying hydrated. Uh, you know, that's one of my, one of my big challenges was for the last, since I've had my daughter and I had my daughter when I was 39 years old, I turned 43 months after she was born. So on the, on the older side. And um, I've had a challenge with uh, just losing extra weight that I did not want to have personally. And uh, if you've been on one of my calls, you've heard recently, or uh, if you've come to one of my six personal perspective classes, uh, I, I have hired a nutrition coach. And hiring a nutrition coach uh, uh, has changed how I feel. And, and I have lost weight. I've lost about 15 pounds since I started about, I don't know, less than 50 days ago. So less than, less than two months in, uh, that's not what it's about. I feel better. It totally works to help your mental health when you're able to find something that works for you. And eating well is one of those things for me. Staying hydrated. I drink two of these a day. I think it, I don't know, it's a mega, I don't know, whatever size it is, but it helps. And it makes me want to go exercise because before when I wasn't really into a routine, I didn't really want to exercise. I didn't, wasn't motivated. I didn't care. My mental health was totally off. But then when I got into a routine of a nutritionist, and by the way, my nutritionist is tough. <laughs> and when you talk about accountability, I have to text her a picture of my meals every two and a half to three hours. And if I don't, I get a text from her yelling at me, yelling at me, but it's helped me. And you have to find what's going to help you. And I think it was Lynn that said, find that one thing, find that one thing you could do and do it well. This was, this was my one thing for the last almost 60 days that I am now working on for myself. And I, and I had to, I had to do a couple of things, three things. I had to commit to myself, not to anybody else, but to myself for it. I had to prepare for it because if you want to be on something like this, you have to prepare. So if I didn't want to commit, then I wasn't going to prepare. And then I had to take accountability or use accountability and ownership on it. So those three things I committed and prepared and taking 
having the uh, accountability and it's helping me. So that was one on here that really stuck out for me. Eating healthy, regular meals every two and a half to three hours for me. Staying hydrated for me. The next one is making sleep a priority. That's my next one. <laughs> Can't have it all, <laughs> can't have it all. But making sleep a priority, stick, sticking to a schedule, making sure you're getting enough sleep. Uh, blue light devices, I have one of those hatches. Anybody know what a hatch is? It's like one of those little devices that lights up different colors and, and you could have white noise come from it. We have it on every single night at my house. Um, it, it helps, I'm just not a good sleeper. I have to work on it, just the way it is. Um, and then the fourth thing was try 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 a relaxing activity, explore relaxation or wellness. Somebody said the Calm app, which I haven't tried yet, and I and I think I would like to. So thank you for sharing that. Uh, incorporate meditation, muscle relaxation, breathing exercise. Schedule regular times for for these healthy activities, and then journal them how you feel. Journal how you feel, because going back and looking at those will help you along your journey. Couple other ones was setting goals and priorities. Practice. Hey Jen, Jen yeah. can I go back to gratitude for a sec? Yes. Oh, yes. I didn't mean to turn the page because that's I have okay. To I'll, I'll do it really quick. So sometimes definitely practice gratitude. And I might also suggest practice and appreciation. Um, so um, appreciation, this has to me a very, um, softer in the moment feel where gratitude is like if something didn't happen there if that didn't happen the shoe would fall and yes I do practice gratitude but appreciation is kind of in the moment as in I really appreciate that Jen gave me the opportunity to co-host this with you so I got got to talk right so I love that and I and and I very thankful and appreciative of that. And I appreciate all the wonderful comments going in the text and the openness of everyone that's here. And my stomach really appreciates that you guys did not mind that I ate my sandwich while we were on this call. <laughs> and I appreciate that Lindsay and David and Hala and Kevin from our market center are on this call. So it's, it. and how can you not smile when you're saying that? Right. Right. So um, I talk about what we do at home a lot. We do rampages of appreciation when we're stuck and we just can't figure it out or we can't move. Um, we'll just say, okay, do, do a rampage of appreciation, 10 things really quick, really quick. Cause we can always find something, the shoes on our feet, the house we're in, something. I love that. And, you know, I, I, um, I took my husband to a couple's uh, retreat back when we were, in, we were just dating and it was with Diana Kokoska. If any of you know uh, who she is, it was, it was the couple's retreat for maps back then. And um, what they had us do, the activity they had us do, uh, Kate was write 10 things you like about, you know, like 10 things that you really appreciate, like, and love about the other person that you're going to say this to. And then you had to stand as close as you could to each other and tell each other what these things are. Yeah. That exercise, if you haven't done something like that recently, go do that. It is a really cool exercise and you just feel a sense of, oh, we, we don't talk about the negative because, you know, there are some things that bother us and there are some things that we might not appreciate about somebody else, but go find the good. And I think that's what you were saying, Kate. And, and you know what, if we're looking for an activity to do, go do that, go do that tonight. It's, it, it really is. It, it makes you feel just really, really great by the end of that, those 10 things. So, okay. Thank you for sharing. So it was set goals and priorities. How can you set goals and priorities? We at Keller Williams have so many tools for that, like a 411. Now, we don't, this is not a 411 class. I'm not talking about that today. Yet we do have that. And it's so important to have in your life. So if that's something that you don't have on your list, write down 411 right now and go talk to your leadership about putting that together. Like right now, put that down on your list, 411. Practice gratitude. I did this on the call yesterday. I think it was our growth call. I said, everybody take your phones out and send a text message to one person in your phone 
and just be grateful for them. Say, thank you. Why don't you guys do that right now? Why don't we, why don't we take 30 seconds to do that? Take your phone out if you're not on it. Text somebody right now. If you're on the growth call yesterday, it's two text messages of gratitude this week. While you're doing that, the other things are focus on the positives. I'm not going to say more about that because you know what? When you when you focus on the the what ifs and the negatives, it just changes the vibe of everything and who's around you and the aura and the energy. Focus on the positives. Stay connected. That's everything that we're talking about. Who's your tribe? Who's your community? Who's your support? Stay connected with them. Okay, the next slide here. Oh, did you guys do that? You, everybody sent a text? Good, that, that was fast, I know. But, all right. The next one here, I think we're running out of time. I don't even know, my watch died, so I don't have my watch on. So sorry for running out of time. Uh, protect your mental health. And this is owning your energy. Oh, I love this one, right? Be aware of the energy you bring into the space. How many of us have gone into a space and the energy was flat or just did not feel right? Any of us ever go into a space like that? Yes. Don't be that. Turn that around. Bring your energy into the space that you are in. Did I just pause? I don't know. My whole screen just paused. Okay. Be the executive over your reactions and actions. Here's what I'd like to say about this. We have an opportunity to either one, respond or react to a situation respond or react. If we're in a discussion and it's maybe not the, the, the most fun discussion or maybe it gets a little elevated, what do people typically do? Respond or react? React. React. We react to the discussion rather than respond to a discussion. When we react to something, Typically, what that reaction is, is not truly what you want to respond as, is it? If you ever think back to a disagreement you had and how you reacted towards that, if you let that go for overnight or an hour or two, how do you show up to the conversation if you didn't react suddenly? You would show up and respond instead of react. These are ways that we're going to own our own energy in our own conversations. Because so many times, especially in real estate, emotions creep in to transactions. And we could get heavily infiltrated with our clients with that emotion. Yet us as the professional we are, we need to remember that we need to respond to these conversations and not react. Keep that in mind as you're going through these transactions with your clients and as we're talking about mental health and how that really shows up. Because if you stay professional and you're able to respond to a conversation rather than react, that transaction is going to go a lot smoother. Your client's going to be a lot happier with the results of what happens. Too many times I see transactions fall apart and the way that they fall apart is because of reactions or emotions that get filled into the transaction rather than saying logical and responding. Those are my two cents on that. Uh, choose your energy, surrender to the moment. Surrender to the moment. Embrace flow over, over storing energy and emotions. Embrace flow over storing energy and emotions. Practice mindful exercises and support your energy. That support your, I'm sorry, let me read that again. Practice mindful exercises that support your energy, yours. You don't have to have mine. You don't have to have Brooke Silva's who's very high, right? Right, you guys are laughing on that, right? Because we know Brooke's energy. I mean, I have high energy, but I don't have high energy, right? Do your energy. What is yours? Own it. 
adopt the life hacks that bring you peace. Sometimes I get lost in the life hack videos because they bring me peace. <laughs> Sometimes just me like, out. They stress what? me out, Jen. <laughs> oh, life hack ones? I'm like, yes, why did I know about this before? Like cutting a pumpkin from the bottom instead of the top. Oh, why that did one, I know that? that one was cool. That one was cool. I'll give you that. <laughs> <laughs> but adopt the life hacks that bring you peace. Really like just bring you peace. If some if something works for you and you feel good about it, keep that. Keep that. All right. Slide 14 is great. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> great means gratitude, relaxation, exercise, acknowledge feelings, and track your thoughts. So I guess developed by Dr. Crystal Lewis, she's a licensed uh, clinical psychologist at the National Institute <laughs> of Mental Health. Uh, she came up with this great acronym. And uh, the, the gratitude is be grateful and smile fall, small things to be grateful about each day. Kind of like what, what Kate already mentioned today. Small things. Text one person a day what you're grateful for. Relaxation. Do things that help you relax. I, I, I'm, I'm going to do something that's going to help me relax right here in the moment. What? I'm going to have to get off the cloud side of an ALC interview that was supposed to start at one. So, <laughs> and, okay. So are we, so are I'm stressing out or... and I don't want them to wait and they just signed in. So I am going to say, Jen, thank you for doing this. Thank you for everyone that's been on here. I can't co-host anymore, Jen. I apologize. Bye. It's okay. It's okay. We're good. Okay. We're okay. Bye everyone. Thank you. All right. Did I just lose the slideshow? No, it's there. Oh, and here we go. All right. Let's go back to great. Are we, we're probably running over, but we only have a couple of slides left here. Um, so relaxation, do something to help you relax, exercise, physical health and mental health that they are tied together guys, right? So physical and mental are tied together. Find a way to engage in physical acti activity each day, even if it is a short 30 minute walk, 30 minutes, acknowledge your feelings, accept your feelings, acknowledge them, make sure that you use them in your st strategic ways to help manage them. So acknowledging your feels is, is a great thing when you're going through this and then track your thoughts, pay attention to your thinking patterns to help you change them and engage them in more helpful thinking. All right, let's see. I want to make sure. Okay. The next one is the resource. What are these called? QR codes. Thank you. QR codes. So take your cameras out. And I believe the first two are the same. I've tried it a couple of times. If you guys get something different, let me know. The first two QR codes seem like bring you to the same, same website. And then uh, the last one. So I'm going to leave that on here before I take this off the screen. They are help resources. Um, and the, the wellness toolkits are really cool. So definitely check that out. And the next thing was the course summary, which uh, I'll put these those links in the chat in a section in a, in a second. So today we described characteristics of mental health and burnout. We identified potential causes related to burnout. We implemented strategies to protect your mental health and identified resources related to mental health and preventing burnout. So that said, I'm going to go there. Go Jennifer, I can sense people things too. I put it in the chat. <clears throat> I have a self-help book. <laughs> you have a self-help book? But I have a booklet that I can send people and my, and my, uh, my book is a uh, free download November 10, 11, and 12 on Kindle. Oh, excellent. And did you say you put it in the chat? I yes. see it. All right, awesome. Very good. Uh, Let me throw in the chat those two links just in case. You guys didn't get them. Here it is. All right. So now let's, if you guys have a few minutes, what are some ahas from today? And I know there's a couple of things that we may have not gone over that you wanted to. So we could discuss. My aha is 
oh, I'm not alone. We're all, we're, there's a, several of us that, you know, are trying to at least be proactive in our mental health and knowing that it's going, you know, it's going to be a long two years from what I've been told. And it's a good way for us to kind of all be on the same page. You are not alone. You are not alone. And we are in these uncharted territories together. And by the way, there is so much Gary Keller himself has said, there is so much opportunity in what's coming ahead. It's up to us. It's up to us to hunger down now, pay attention to what these classes are talking about and go take action on them. Go take action on how you could be 1% better. Go take action on how to lead generate a little better. Go take action on how to get more listings. These are the ways that we're going to thrive by. So thank you for that. Any other ahas before we sign off for today? And um, while we're doing that, thank you guys so much for sticking with the class today and, and coming along with me. Um, I needed this class just as much as you guys did. So thank you very, very much. Any other ahas? This was just great. Thank you so much, Jen. Thank you. Appreciate you. All right, guys. Well, we are uh, almost 10 minutes over, so I apologize for that. Have a great rest of your day, and hopefully I'll see you on a growth ball or uh, one thing session soon. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.